Finally time to start this old girl. Hey guys, welcome back to Tamiya Legends. Once again, thank you for stopping by. So as I said, it's finally time to start this original frog. Um, this has been lying around here for probably five or six months. Um, it was one I just saved for winter, basically, as, as a bench project. So as I say, it's an original Tamiya frog. It's not the Mac 1 edition, which had the very small um, front bumper, um, which is a little bit unfortunate, but nevertheless, it's an original. Um, I'll just will the wizard body shell off very quickly so you can see what it looks like. The shell's in great condition, just obviously not box art, but it's definitely worth keeping. It's got the switch attached to the um, shell like the original did. So as you can see, obviously we'll have a close up on this, but as you can see, it's got two servos and the manual speed controller in there. Looks like the original black end um, silver can 540. Um, and I've got to say, it does look to be in very good condition. Um, the resistor plate has snapped off, which I'm not going to be able to fix with a double resistor there. Um, I don't think I'm now. It's like a little like FRP plate. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, that's in a bit of a sorry state. So I'm not too sure what I'm going to be able to do with that. Um, but um, let's get the camera close to this. I'll give you a close up on the car and then I'll show you a box of goodies that I've I've got for it, which I've had for it for it for ages, which we got it all from Tony's Tamiya Parts, which will complete this restoration. So uh, let's have a look. So as you can see, as I said earlier, the shell is in really good condition. Um, obviously it's just been sprayed the green colour and black instead of the white and pink. Um, so it's a great shell as to use as a runner or whatever. I even got the spotlights, the only thing that's missing is the driver. But um, let's just whiz that off. But there's the chassis. So it's not really a restoration as such because it's basically all there. The only things that were missing were the um, front steering arms. Um, which I've got a set which I'll show you in a second um, and, and obviously wheels and tyres it did come with rear Subaru Brat wheels which I've well I don't even know what I've done with those so I've had to order a brand new set of the rear, rear wheels and tyres as I say everything there everything else looks to be there gearbox feels a little bit rough um, I'm guessing it's obviously not ball rest feels a bit grainy as well um, Rear shocks seem to work okay. Battery clips there as well, because they normally always go missing. And front suspensions all there. Um, so as I say, it's really front end. It's just a case of once it's clean, adding the uprights to it, connecting the steering, and we're uh, we're pretty much good to go. So right now, I don't know what I'm going to do with this car. It's just it's just basically now to get it sort of ready so I make that decision. So in this video we'll be doing the full chassis um, and then we'll po probably make a part two video with um, getting the body shell done. And then when we're at that stage, I'll decide what I'm gonna do. Um, I mean, with it having the period electrics in, I know there's no receiver, but uh, I have a couple of receivers. I have two receivers in fact. But I've got very few Tarba servos, but I've got an old Acoms receiver, which I could fit in. So, but I have only got one old um, AM or FM, whatever you call it, transmitter. So it would be nice to run it old school. Um, and also, I, I must admit, I'll just show you this quickly. I am also thinking that if I go down this route to uh, maybe put in this beautiful um, Technigold motor as well, which I think would be very nice. Um, but I think before we make those decisions, we need to see what the gearbox is like. So let me show you the bits I've got now for the restore. So here's my box of goodies that I've got. Now, unfortunately, I have to restore this with re re parts, um, but obviously genuine Tamiya. Um, in an ideal world, I'd love to put original parts on, but they're just too hard to find. And if you find them, they're just too expensive. And again, as I always say, I'm not a Tamiya purist. This thing will be all Tamiya and it's going to look mint and that's good enough for me. So, as you can see, we've got a full set of front and back three-piece wheels. We've got the Riri frog and, uh, sorry, front and back rear tyres. 
We've also got a brand new driver figure, which comes with some new spotlights, which is nice, which means we can do it all fresh. And then we've got part bags A and C. So that's mainly all the wheel, the tiny screws and nuts for the wheels. Um, I also managed to find um, Tamiya of the left and right uprights. As I said, they were missing from the car. And Tony from Tony's Tammy Parts also very kindly put those four screws in for the uprights. So that's mega cool. So that's all the bits for the um, chassis. Let's have a look at the body shell. So again, from Tony's Tamiya Parts, we got um, a new Riri Frog shell and wing which is super cool and with that body set I also got the original Riri decals with it but because it's an original chassis I thought it'd be pretty cool to order um, an original set of reproduction decals from MCI because there's a few little changes For example the original Pennzoil whereas on the Riri it would change to forward what else is uh, spotlights you've got the bright light on the Riri whereas it was daylighters on the um, original so it's just small little changes like that there'll probably only be five or six decals actually change but it will look as the original did which is i like doing that it's pretty cool so um i think let's talk and um let's get this chassis stripped down Right, that's it all stripped to a kind of level I'm happy with at the moment. Um, I've kept a lot of the screws in certain places um, to make it easier for me to build back together. But that is going to hamper me cleaning all these bits up. So I do have an original Subaru Brat manual downstairs. This is going to be probably 80-90% identical, um, I hope. So what I'm thinking of doing, I'm going to have a quick look at the manual, but I'm going to probably take all the screws out because I really need to clean this thing up. I mean, it's not bad at all, but you know, you can see the grime like that. You know, those screws are only going to get in the way, and we also run the risk of rusting the screws, which we don't want to do. There's a lot of this um, steel or alloy plate, whatever it is, that needs scrubbing up. Um, the rear shocks I've left built for now, but as you can see, I need to get into those grooves. Not um, zooming in, but you get the idea. I believe there are oil shocks on um, the frog because I believe a Subaru Brat were friction shocks. So again, I need to be careful with that because I I don't know how they go together. But you get the gist of it. Let me just show you this gearbox. Old school, my friends. No dog bones in sight. That's your drive shafts with hex ends. That tells you it's an original bad boy. So obviously the cups are hex hex ends. I have this metal gear inside. I've never seen that before. Two bearings either side. The gearbox is actually um, fully ball rest. Now it only has it has two bearings there and it has two in the outer cups. That's it. So the only thing that actually does need ball rest and it's just four for the front wheels. So will do that. Gears look to be in amazing condition. The thing was completely bone dry, which I kind of knew, so it's, it had to go down to this level, you know, just even like the pivot screws and stuff, you know, the dry. When we build it all back up, we need to re-grease everything. Um, differentials in great condition. The only thing I found which is of, of concern was this diff gear. This side looks awesome, but if you look at the teeth on that, it's been touching something and it's worn and it's kind of I won't say it's melted because I'm let me just see if I can get this in camera you see those two there I've just got my nails in there and got rid of this gunk here so I'm gonna have to do that all the way around but it, at least it comes off I don't know if you can see that's actually coming off um, so I'm not too sure what's caused that but obviously we need to get all this stuff scrubbed up in some hot soapy water and get as much residue off it as we can but all in all it looks pretty good I have to say um, 
Only other thing I did have problems with was this metal plate that goes across the whole Z manual speed controller on. It's got four screws in it. Two of them came out easily, but two of them, you know, I'm probably gonna see this, had um, some kind of residue, yeah, you can't really see it, but it was like, it, I presume it was like some kind of thread lock and they'd wedged it, it's like a bluey color, Let's see if I can show you it here. So it's, it's those two holes there, it's that bluey color. And it was like a glue almost, so the screws wouldn't turn and the screws were rounded. So it took me, I had to get some, I had to be pretty rough and get some pliers from the outside and force them out. Which is a real shame, so those screws are damaged. But I did have a look in my little magic box of bits and um, I found two silver ones. But obviously the originals are gold. So, there's um, two gold screws, a, a, well I'm hoping to find two gold screws in here. I mean, it's not the end of the world. There's two in this little plate, but they're actually not long enough. Anyway, I'm mumbling. It'd be nice if I could, because it'll be gold on one side and silver on the other. Again, it's no biggie, but we like to keep things, these things right. So, as I said, next step, I'll dig that manual out, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a piece at a time, or a section at a time, get it all cleaned up, get it as, as clean as I can, and then we'll start laying it back on the table and hopefully get all this into some kind of order just to put it all back together when it's clean. So it's a fairly big job, but uh, let's get cracking. Right, so that's it all sort of washed off in hot soapy water, and I'm just letting it all sort of dry off now. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, you can take as much time over this as you want. I personally, on a car like this, don't. I'm just happy to get the main sort of stains off of it, which I've done on the plastics. Now, what I will do on pieces like this, when I come to use it, I'll look at it again, and I'll get a little toothbrush, should be any, any more dirt or anything that I've missed, because it doesn't, hot soapy water in a sink, doesn't get everything. Um, again, with the plates, you know, you could polish all that up. Um, the, some of the plates have got the, the metals being sort of a little bit of corrosion, so it's marked, so that won't wash off. For me personally, I'm not bothered. I like that kind of edge. It's really not an issue for me. But again, if you've got time on your hands and you want it absolutely perfect to, to sit on the shelf, then uh, you could polish all that stuff up and it'd look amazing. Um, on that differential gear, I did manage to, I can't get that black line off, but I did get it all off the teeth. So that's uh, that gear's good to go again, which was good because I was a bit concerned about that. And that, that uh, gear cleaned up really well. So um, as I say, we'll just take from there as and when we need it. So first job, what I'm gonna do, what I should have said was, I've dug, a, dug the Subaru Brat manual out. That's all the pile of screws and some bits, other bits and bats that's needed. Um, but I'm gonna rebuild these shocks first, just because there's lots of little springs and stuff with them. So I've got some soft damper oil. Uh, I'm gonna dry these off now. One came up really well, the others sort of, I don't know what the wording is, but whatever that metal's done, it's done. Again, I'm not overly bothered about this kind of stuff. As long as it's all smooth and the operation of it is great, that's good enough for me. So let's get these two shocks built up. And that's the shocks built up. I would have liked to have done that on camera so you could see them if you've not. But um, they're a quite unique design. They are oil dampers. Um, but you kind of fill the body up with oil, um, get the bubbles out of it as normal. And then there's a there's a white spacer with a um, which is kind of sandwiches an O-ring which you fit inside, but that's got a hole in it for a little screw. So once you push that in, you bleed it again, wipe the excess oil off, and then put this tiny little screw through the top. And then before you put the cap on, it's got a tiny little spring inside there, which keeps that um, O-ring in place. Quite a very unique design. And um, oops, a little bit of oil on them. <laughs> this is working well, but as you can see, they're so much better than they were. It's got a very slow rebound, which is interesting. They both have. Anyway, so that's the shocks done, so next stage now is we'll start building it from the manual. Right, so starting to put the chassis together. Um, if you've never done an SRB, SRB. <laughs> If you've never done an ORV of chassis, stands for off-road vehicle, um, they're very unique because obviously it splits in half. 
So I've um, screwed this bracket on. That's got two screws. This bracket's on with two screws. This, these are your servo mounts. Now this one's got a little ridge there, so it can't move inside the chassis once it's in position. But this black one here can slide along once it's all together to um, get the width correct for your servos. Also has these two little barrel nuts or whatever they're called, which is a hex on one end, which goes there. Um, and this is a little bit fiddling now because obviously we've got the other end to clamp on. But while we're doing that, we have to add the front bumper, which goes in this groove here. And we've also got to um, put the battery holder, which just sits in that, that flap there. So then we've got to get this on and get it clamped up. So I'll uh, quickly do that off camera and we'll get this chassis clamped up, clamped up together. And that's the chassis together. So as I say, this is bolted up tight. This bit's bolted up tight. That goes with a pin on the gearbox later. So the front end's a little bit loose, but that's what we're gonna work on next. And as I say, that kind of slides up and down for your servos, but that's for a, a later date. One, inter one interesting thing that I wanna show you on these old sort of vintage manuals is, um, let me go to the next stage I'm on, which is this bottom one here. So as you can see, it's your kind of normal Tamiya instructions, but what you don't get in the old uh, manuals is um, the one-to-one -one view of what screws to use. Um, it doesn't even state the size of these screws, which is amazing really. So obviously it just says, um, where is it? I've seen it somewhere. It tells you a parts bag, or I might be lying. Maybe it doesn't. No, it doesn't tell you a parts bag. So anyway, I was kind of blown away with that. So you've got to be really careful when you are kind of restoring um, to make sure you use the right screws that came out. Now, luckily on this, it needs four of these screws. And there's, there's actually six, but two of them are uh, about three mil longer. So I know which four it is. So the next stage in here is you put these spring go Oops, sorry, a spring goes at this spring goes in there and then there's um, a cap that fits in and holds it secure and then we start with the um, alloy upright or whatever it's called and then that bolts up and that'll start bolting the full front end together so um, let's crack on and get that bit built so interestingly now I've got that bolted together you have to grease these pips because obviously as I said they're spring loaded as you can see they have to push in that's your front suspension. Crazy, isn't it? That's why a lot of guys upgrade this for better front suspension. Anyway, that's cool. So the next stage now is what? So it's the front uprights to do. So we'll get the new parts out as well and get those installed. And then moving down, it's the arms, fit the arms back on, that rod. And then the both um, front arms get bolted to the, oops, sorry. And then both front arms, once built, just get bolted to the front of the car. Nice and straightforward. That's my new steering arms on with the new screws I got with it. All greased up. Nice. Seems funny now to see this. I've been looking at this car for so long without these on. Anyway, next stage, let's get the arms on it. And the front end lives again. And it's way better than it was, obviously, it was dry as a bone. So we've got the new up, um, upright steering arms, I don't know what you call them. Um, they're all in pay, place, everything's grease, as you can see all residue on the top, so I'll get all that wiped off. Fitted the bumper on, um, more importantly, that's the suspension, and it, uh, it's got much more, it's much more smoother than it was. It's a, it's a very odd design. Um, what else is there? So I can't put the steering arms just on, on yet because I'm not bothering putting any electrics in on this video. Um, the only issue I had was when you bolt down these arms here, it's supposed to have um, a plastic spacer, but I've actually just used what the previous owner had. So there's a copper spacer down there, but I've added these washers on top. I mean, they, they can't go anywhere. Um, but at some point I might see if I can dig out or even cut some spaces but um, yeah that's the front end done so cool so looking at the destructions next I'm telling you to build wheels up but we'll do that last um, now obviously this is a Subaru 
manual and I keep getting confused when I'm looking for certain bits and they're slightly different. Just a quick example of that. This, um, I presume it's like a GRP plate, glass reinforced plastic, and I'm not too sure what it's made from. Um, Subaru doesn't have that. It, um, what does it have? In fact, it doesn't seem to have anything. So anyway, I had to go back and just look at one of the previous videos I've done just to make sure I'd bolted it down correctly and I, and I had. So as I say, it's now um, fun time, it's a gearbox, which I'm delighted about. This is a very strange gearbox to put together and the fact that it was already ball race and it was so rough is worrying me slightly. And granted, there wasn't any grease in there, so let's start building all this up together and um, We'll see how it feels. Actually, on this kind of gearbox, so it doesn't all get bolted up until it gets onto the chassis. So um, it's a little bit of a when you when you're spinning stuff, just when you're holding the gearbox, it's not really a true reflection of how free it's going to be until it's kind of clamped down properly. Anyway, enough babble. Let's get cracking with it. And finally, that's the gearbox built and bolted to the chassis. It's a pig of a gearbox, this one. You've got to, I mean, well, this is gonna sound stupid. I was gonna say, you gotta get it bang on. But you really do with this one. There's so many tiny little things you can do incorrectly and put stuff in the wrong position. And then when you put it all to, to it's, like, it's almost, a, you need two pairs of hands to get this thing together. Anyway, I couldn't do it from a Subaru manual because it's, it is quite a lot different um, with it not having a differential and what have you. Um, Anyway, I downloaded, well I didn't, I just did pictures, I, I put copy pictures of the gearbox um, for, me, for the original frog. Now, that is super sweet, super super smooth, sorry, That's, that feels great, and then obviously the diff, um, obviously we're getting grease around it as well, but that feels so much better. Now, given that we had that damage on that gear, I've got a sneaky, yeah, I think the previous owner or the, whoever built the car, the um, the gear that has the brass gear that goes through the nylon gear and then it's got a, a clip on the side, I think he'd got it the wrong way around um, and the gear was pressing at one side too much, hence why it just started to burn the nylon. So I'm pretty, I, I know for a fun, this is 100% now, so... It just feel it just absolutely now obviously with this particular chassis by the time you put your, your drive shafts on and what have you it does get a little bit um harder but um as as that gearbox stands right now and the diff yeah very happy with that so next up now is to start getting this back end together so let's get all the parts out that we need for that right so everything greased um drive shafts in one of the gators had split, the end was missing, which is not ideal. It, it actually um, taped it up. Um, I was going to do the same, but uh, no, I won't bother. So I've tucked that end right in there for now, but I will have to get a set of, of that rubber gators. Um, so yeah, that's the gearbox fully bolted down with the um, rear arms. Um, obviously, as I say, I fitted two pairs of bearings in either side of the cups. Um, and as I say, that feels way better now. And if I put my finger in the gearbox and hold the, ge the, the gear, this is not coming across on camera very well, is it? I'll do it like that. And then that's the diff turning. It's not the smoothest diff in the world, but the gears are fine. It's just the actual design of it. Um, but as I say, overall, that feels nice, way better. Right, so next thing to do is I'm going to whiz these rear shocks on. Obviously, they just go across here, um, and then I have to go back. I finished with the Subaru manual now because I need to put the frog comes with that plate, my plate that goes underneath. So I need to get that bolted on, um, and then we'll see what else is to do. Right, we're getting there now. Um, so obviously, the shocks are on one of the that side shocks threaded which is an issue so i might have to dig out um, a longer self tapper screw but it's not going anywhere but um, obviously it needs fixing so we've got that rear suspension now it feels as good as it's supposed to feel um, as i say the drives feels great all this is all greased up 
um, what else have I done? I've put the two sides on, hold the battery in, and I've also put the frog, um, what do you call that, protector plate on, which actually strengthens the whole front end up, because before I put that on, I did notice that this was, this was a little bit wobbly. Once that plate goes on, it eradicates that issue. So, that's pretty much that chassis done. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is... What am I going to do? I think I might just bang the steering servo in so I can get these arms on to keep these um, in the straight position. And I might as well get the wheels and tyres made up and just get them on the car. And then that's the chassis completely done. And obviously we've got a couple... We've got my magic bearing bag because we've got another... Uh, two pairs of bearings to put in those front wheels so um, let's get that done and she's done so obviously I've built the wheels up um, there's five screws and nuts in each rears are always a pig to do but there's definitely a technique to do it to get the inners in but um, compared to what this car was like before I started to what it's like now is incredible um, the front suspension was non-existent and now it's really not. I mean, it's it's not the best suspension, but it's uh, that's as good as it as it works. Rear, you can hear the oil working, and um, the drive, and obviously we've got the diff. I put a little bit of bling in there. Don't know if you noticed, and then we've got the diff working. I just that's just all oh, great. Well. Bit of bling for you guys. That looks nice, doesn't it? So yeah, very happy with that. Considering how that car started. Um, yeah, that's much better. Well, I have to say, I really enjoyed that. That that was an absolute pleasure working on it. Um, it's one I've been putting off for a while. Um, it, it's funny when you're doing a YouTube channel like this because sometimes you just t tend to pick the easier jobs. Uh, and I'm very guilty of that and obviously this was a sort of full strip down to the last screw um, and sometimes I just can't be bothered with it but I, I don't actually know why because when I do it it's you get a much better sort of sense of achievement of what you've done um, and that was I, mean, I can't believe how solid it is for its age I think the frog's 1983 yeah I'm pretty sure it's 1983 that's incredible so as it stands right now the only thing that's not original is the wheels and tyres which is superb and as I say that suspension that's all working so nice and the drive it's got a really big pinion on it I didn't count the teeth I just it was the one that came with it um, but the diffs and or diff really cool steering oh I've just noticed something that's one of these steering is off you can see the angle of the steering rods. One's up, one's down. Never noticed that. I'll have to put that right. Um, how is that? Oh, man. I'm going to have to take an upright off. Anyway, I'll get that fixed because that'll um, mess with the steering. So as I say, yeah, I really enjoyed that. So next up, oh, and obviously I'll put the Technigold in. Kind of planning on running the Technigold in this. Um, but I do need to get into that motor because that's the motor I was given so I just need to get into it, check the com, check the brushes um, and build it back up, give it a little clean and then hopefully if it's good to go we'll get it in this car not sure if we're going to go with old school electrics put another servo in and use the manual speed controller I may well do um, but we will see um, but that's it for this video in the next video obviously it's the cosmetic side of it so we'll be, get, we'll be doing the shell and wing all the decals we'll also do a tire writing which is these are the worst tires to do a tire writing on the writing is tiny it's my least favorite one to do and it's one of those where close up it really doesn't look that good but from a distance they don't look bad at all so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed that um, as always thanks so much for watching it's really appreciated if you are new to this channel if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us and if you do that, please smash that notification bell for our weekly videos. But as always, guys, happy assaying.